Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out his plan for us. So welcome to church. Good morning, Somerville Family Worship Center. How is everybody today? Oh, come on. How's everybody today? There you go. There you go. Wow, what a beautiful day the Lord has given us. Uh, we were talking right before service. We want to welcome each and every one of you on live stream as well today. And maybe this falls in your category, how uh, that some have said in one week they experienced 75-degree weather, they experienced tornadoes, and they experienced snow and hail in one week. And I, my wife and I experienced some of that in just about, one, that, that was in one day, <laughs> in one day. Sun was shining, it was beautiful, and then they thought, they thought it was going to blow us away. And uh, wow, the, the tornadoes actually went below us and above us. It kind of split off and spared us. And then when we got back home, uh, Friday or Saturday, we got back home. We got back in over the weekend. Man, it, it just got pretty rough over there in, in off of uh, Crowfield area in College Park. I mean, the wind was terrible. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad the Lord's allowed you to be here with us. We're so excited about what God's got in store for us today. Uh, how many know what we're celebrating today? All right. Everybody got your palms? There you go. Yeah, you do see you got them right there. I know there's some on the floor. If you don't feel comfortable waving your palms, you might feel silly. Grab a palm off the floor and wave it. Nobody will think anything different, okay? Uh, we sure do love and appreciate you so much. And uh, it's an exciting time to be alive. I'm going to ask you to stand with us, if you will. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you with a heart of thanksgiving. You are great and greatly to be praised. Heard some good reports already today. Lord, I've heard how you are moving and you are ministering. Uh, God, I'm grateful for that. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and Lord, as I was sharing with the men as we were getting ready to come into the service praying, uh, Lord, some people just, they know and we know, but there's more than just the knowing. It's time for the showing. Oh, God, show up. Show yourself mighty on their behalf. Uh, Lord, bring healing and strength today. Uh, we celebrate this day, uh, Lord, as a memorial, knowing, uh, Lord, you came not only just a triumphal entry into Jerusalem that day, but into my heart, into my life, uh, into the hearts and lives of those in this building, you have made a triumphal entry. We worship you today. We praise you, God, and we lift your name on high. Amen. Amen. Way among us, 
new Cause when we see you We find strength to face the day In your presence All our fears are washed away When we see you Cause when we see you We find strength to face the day Cause in your presence All our fears are washed away They're washed away when we see you we find strength to face the day how many of you know that this morning in your presence all our fears are washed away because when we see you lord because when we see you we find strength to face the day because in your presence all our fears are washed away they're washed away.
Praise God. Praise the Lord. Oh, I could keep on singing that. How about you? How about let's give a palm wave to the Lord this morning. Great is the Praise Lord the Lord. He praised. is King of kings and Lord of lords. Is he King and ki of King and Lord of lords in your life? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated just for a, a couple of minutes. I tell you, I, sometimes I think we just forget who he is and who he wants to be in our lives. Right, right. And um, we, um, we found a jacket in the back of our van about a couple of weeks ago, and it was brand new, a nice fleece, zipped up the front with a hood. And um, so I began to think about ladies who had ridden in our van. So I called Sister Reba and Sister Margaret, and I said, did you leave a black jacket in our, our van? And then I called Brittany and Jessica and Stacy, and, and it wasn't any of theirs. But anyway, um, I got to looking at it up close, and I, I figured out that, okay, now don't judge me, okay? <laughs> I figured out that it was mine. <laughs> It was my jacket. It, it was a new jacket. I'd never worn it before. And um, okay. the thing that really threw me off was the little angel right here, a little pin that um, I didn't even remember putting on there. But you know what? Um, you know what I thought about? God's blessings, his relationship he wants with us, it, he is there and we don't even know it sometimes. Mm -hmm. We don't even acknowledge him sometimes. And he was, he's there all the time. There's a song that says he was there all the time, just waiting, just waiting for that communion with us, just waiting for that time to just to speak into our lives and our hearts. But sometimes we're too busy and sometimes we just don't acknowledge him. So if there's something missing in your life today, I'm telling you, it's Jesus. Amen. And he wants to hold you close today. He wants to be your Lord, and he wants to give you the joy that you used to have or the joy that you've never had that you've longed for. And um, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you get weak in your walk, then think about, well, how, do I have the joy of the Lord? And um, he wants to give you that this morning. Praise the Lord. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Lord, thank you. you have all, I've already felt your presence here today. My brothers and sisters have felt your presence here today. Thank you for blanketing us with your sweet, sweet Holy Spirit today. Lord, will you continue to do that in our worship to you, Father? We celebrate you. Hosanna, Hosanna, we celebrate you today, Lord. We bless your name, Father. Lord, I pray your blessings on this service. Lord, on every song that is sung. Lord, on the sermon. Your word has already been anointed. But, Lord, I pray you'll anoint my husband today to preach your word, Father. Lord Jesus, I pray and I ask it in your name, Father. In your name, Jesus. Praise the Lord. As the ushers are coming, I want you just to uh, remain uh, in, this, in this prayerful attitude towards the Lord, we're going to have a baptism at the end of the service. And you may, you may, the Lord may say uh, to you, he may speak to you, and you may say, I want to be baptized today. Well, that's fine. Um, uh, but anyway, we're going to have a baptism at the end of the service. This Friday, we're going to have a Good Friday Seder meal. Do y'all know what that is? Well, if you don't sign up, make sure you sign up today because we can't take walk-ins just the way it is, the Seder meal is. You have to sign up. I hope you'll be a part of that this Friday at 11 o'clock. And then next Sunday, Easter, we will be in the sanctuary, so I hope that you'll be here for that. And also next Sunday morning, ladies or men, if you do the cooking, you don't have to fix breakfast. Come on to the church. 
The Couples Ministry is sponsoring a breakfast, and uh, donations will be appreciated. But anyway, I hope you feel welcome today. Our offering today will go to United Missions. And you, as a, a local body here, you have ministered to Ukraine through this horrible crisis that they are going through. Yes. And uh, your offerings has helped to, to minister to them and a lot of other places too. But let's um, bow our heads. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the way you have blessed us. And now, Lord, we're giving back to you. We're giving an offering, Lord, and, and Lord, we're also tithing 10% of, of our income that you have blessed us with. Father, would you bless it, Lord, so that it, it just will be pressed down and flowing over, Father. Lord, you bless us in many different ways, and we praise you, Father. Lord, have your way in this service today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord today. sought the Lord. Stand with us, folks. And he answered me and delivered me from everything. Those who look on him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. This poor man i 
God sent his son They called him Jesus He came
us because he lives. Can we do that with just the vocals right now? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. someone today in this sanctuary, someone watching by way of live stream, and a shout out to Mitch. He keeps sending me messages. I keep sending him messages. God is moving in a great way, building a friendship, and I'm grateful for that. But folks, it's not just facing tomorrow. How many know we need his grace to face today? Amen. This moment. Because he lives, I know I can face this moment. I can face this day. I can face tomorrow. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's happening where you live. But I know one thing, as my wife has said, he's right there waiting for you just to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to pick up your strength and put it on. I'm going to pick up your love, your grace, your mercy, and put it on. I'm going to put on the armor of God today. What a fabulous testimony. What a confidence. What an assurance. To know he lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some folks have gotten some negative news this past week. He lives. Someone spoke to me this morning, giving me their funeral arrangements. Want me to know what they, they wanted me to do at their funeral when they die. Well, I got news for you. I'm not planning to die. I'm planning to live. Now, I know we got to make plans to die here, but listen, I told you this several months back, and this is the season. I heard Brother Sam talking about his taters. Taters was about this high, and it frosted over there. He said, I hope it didn't kill all my taters. Planting, it's time. After Good Friday, was what my grandpa said, don't put anything in the ground until after Good Friday. You're going to have to work with it and cover it up because it will frost. And I got to thinking about that. When something dies, we bury it. We don't expect it to come back. It's buried. But when you plant something, the Bible said it's going to die in the ground, and then it's going to come back up. Woo! Hallelujah. You see, because he lives, I'm going to be planted one day. You go by a grave somewhere, a cemetery, and you see my name on a gravestone, you can say, that man, I might just have it put on my, on my epitaph, you know, planted to live again. Amen. Because, folks, that's the hope he gives us. He took the sting out of death. He came, overcame death, hell, and the grave for you and I. And some folks aren't with us today. They've gone on to their reward. Some of you have faced more than your share of saying, I'll see you later, not goodbye. Man, when my dad passed away, I'll see you later, Dad. I send messages all the time. A oh, man, when I'm standing over, I remember when Granny Cheryl, get ready to pass away. Granny Cheryl, when you get on the other side and you hear this big mouth man singing, playing a, a beautiful instrument in heaven, his guitar, and then you hear his name is John, John Martin. 
I said, you tell him his son sends his love. I'm still staying faithful and true to what he taught me. I'm still staying faithful and true to the Lord. And one of these days, we're going to have a reunion, and I get to play more music with you, Dad. Send a message. Send a message. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, there's an old song that says, while standing by the bedside of a neighbor who was just about to cross the swelling tide, I asked him if they'd do me a favor and take this message to the other side. <laughs> Papaw Kelly, woo, hallelujah, rejoicing in the presence of the Lord right now. And those loved ones who've gone on before us, what are you saying? Because he lives, I live. You live. Man, just for the next few moments, stop thinking about dying and start thinking about living. Amen. Sing a little more of that. Just jump in there wherever you want to, son. Hallelujah. Is this okay? You're watching by way of, li way, way of live stream? Welcome. Today's your day. This is the Genesis day of your life. In the beginning. This is the Genesis week of your life. In the beginning. Let this be the beginning for you. And because he certain things happen but I do know he lives I do know he's watching over me I do know he's walking with me I do know he's pursuing me sister Gail you feeling better today oh quit smiling so much brother Stanley <laughs> oh my lord 
You may be seated. We were, we were in a wonderful time last night with our couples ministry and having a game night and doing some Bible trivia, hanging out and just talking and sharing. And my phone rang in the middle of this class. And, and so I looked down and it was Stanley Scott. I said, I better answer this. Stanley don't call me a lot. He doesn't aggravate me. He aggravates me a lot, but he doesn't call me a lot. <laughs> and so I said, I better check on this man and see what's going on. And he said, man, my wife's not feeling well. Voice is, you know, with my, could be the pollen. We think that's what it is. Just, you know, head's hurting. And I said, we're going to go to prayer right now. So we stopped what we were doing. And uh, the couples that were there, we all gathered around and just prayed for Sister Gail. And it's evidence I see the evidence of your goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, Art, 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 Art. Come on back up. Man, man. We, I don't, wow. Is this okay? We don't, Palm Sunday comes once a year, y'all. Man. Um, um, can, I know you can pull that song up somewhere. I see the evidence of your goodness. Praise team? Yes. Come on back up. Y'all, we ain't done. Come Come on, somebody. Did we come to have church or what? Listen, if you came for the cut and dry stuff, you're in the wrong place. But if you came for the Lord to minister to your life, you are in the right place. I see the evidence of his goodness. I feel like this would be a good song for us. I, I, you set the stage so beautifully for what I'm preaching today, but I just feel like this is the direction we need to be going right now. Man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we got a baptismal service in a little while. Praise God, evidence of God's goodness, changing hearts and lives. Amen, amen. Praise God. Whenever y'all get ready, it, you can stand with us and worship with us. Praise God. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms give way to spring, and every season, and where I'm standing, I see.
promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. And why should I fear the only evidence is here? This morning, church, sing. Why should I fear? Oh, the evidence is here. His spirit is the evidence this morning. Why should I fear? Oh, the evidence is here. Jesus, praise God. Thank you for where you brought us from to where we are today. Thank you, Lord. Amazing God. Amen. You may be seated now. Thank you for letting us do a little bit of holiness calisthenics. Man, you say we're Pentecostal, we need to act like it. I'm just a saying. I don't believe heaven's going to be divided in a bunch of denominations and quiet folks on this side and all those shouters on the other. I believe we're all just going to have a spell. I really do. I don't know about you, but the, the heaven I'm going to is loud like me. Rob, Rob was picking at me a few weeks ago. It might have been last week. I don't know. Uh, maybe it was last week because the Lord, the Lord preached me like a dish rag last week. My Lord, I was soaking wet and I was exhausted. The next day, I was so tired, I showed her, like, I said, what is wrong? with?" She said, honey, my Lord, when the anointing's on you like that, you can't help but just to be wrung out. <laughs> I'm like, wow. He said, I got one word for you. I don't know how you spell it. The service, he said, I got one word for you. And it was, woo! I said, <laughs> I said, go ahead, man, go ahead. Oh, my Lord. God is good to us. Uh, wow, today, we have the opportunity to be alive Today, we have the privilege to be able to celebrate Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry. Now, we're going to be looking at Matthew 21 and also John chapter 12. They speak about this triumphal entry. And uh, um, in looking at this today, I'm going to attempt, I'm going to, attempt to, to lay some things out there for you. We're going to talk first about the crowd. Why were they there? Okay, the crowd. They're going to talk about the palms and the significance of the palms. And then we're going to talk about the beast of burden and his purpose in this plan. 
So I've laid it out there for you. It's simple. One, two, three. For you folks that like the one, two, three step, boom, 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 here we go. And I don't know that I'll stay in step because I like to jazz it up. My wife, she's amazing. I'm telling you, she, she knows that when you dance, one leads, the other follows. And so just during the, our anniversary time, we turn on a song at the house and we're just dancing together. And so when we're dancing like this, I want to do this sometimes. And she doesn't miss a beat, y'all. It took her a little while to learn that. We first got married, took her for a ride on a motorcycle, and she tried to kill me. <laughs> I pulled that motorcycle over, and I looked at her as lovingly as I could, and I said, you got to stop what you're doing. Every time we'd go to lean into a curve, she'd go the other way. How many guys, you know, it's like, just get through the curve. I'm like, what in the world's wrong with my motorcycle? So the next curve we went to lean into it, we went, I kind of looked over, and there she was. <laughs> She's like, I'm like, you can't. So I said, listen, you sit, and you stare, and you look. Where I go, you go. Where that helmet leans, you lean. I don't, I don't, we're not going to fall over, I promise you. So Brother Sam, she finally got it. When I leaned, she leaned. It was a, and you enjoyed the motorcycle ride, didn't you? It was great. Matter of fact, she enjoyed it so much that through our marriage, we've ridden many motorcycles. I've taken her on many rides. And one time, she was as big as a barrel with Jessica. And I, I was up on the gas tank, and she's on the back, and we're riding around the campground having a great time. I want that baby to come on, y'all. <laughs> God is so good. Following the lead is very important, though. Very important. And so when we look at the crowd, how many know when, when you do something amazing, crowds come? When you raise the dead? Boy, in churches today, they're raising the devil and casting out the dead. Which is kind of a little backwards, I believe. We're supposed to be, in his name, laying hands on the sick, and they recover. We're supposed to be, in his name, Casting out devils. I know it scares some of y'all. I've been in many a service in my lifetime and been witness to that and also been a part of that, praying for someone and them being set free and delivered. It's a beautiful sight when you see the release and they're like, oh, praise God. They can breathe freely and they cry out to the Lord. Folks, that's why we're here. This is not about us feeling good. I love that. It's not about us seeing this Spirit moving, no. It's about us being a conduit to when the Holy Spirit flows through us, somebody else says, "Woo, Boy, I like, I, I, man, what is that? You ever been around people and they kind of nudge up closer and closer when the Spirit starts moving? They're like, you know why? Because there's something there that they're feeling. Something, your family, man, when they're around you and the power of God is moving, they're like, mm. I, I'm going to tell on me when I first started preaching, I was always afraid when I first started pastoring, I should say, not preaching, pastoring, I was kind of a little worried, you know, that people come into our service sometimes and they don't know like we know and what we know, a lot of unchurched people there, you know, and the power of God get to moving. I'm thinking, man, these, don't scare some of these folks slapped to death because we used to shout. We don't shout like we used to. We used to shout. Lord, it was dangerous to be in a Pentecostal service. Bobby pins flying everywhere, shoes coming off. That's why, I am like, that's why I am like I am. I've been danced on more than one or two times, laying on a pallet on the floor. Boop, 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 boop. Just, you know, and then pop, praise God, hallelujah. And I am like I am because of that. But we used to really, we used to have testimony services where people would just all oh, talk about the power of God and being set free. And when they would get happy, somebody else would get happy. Oh, we're, we're, we haven't lost it all the way, folks. We, we love the Lord here. I know that. We f I feel him. You feel him. We, I'm not disappointed in our worship by no means. So nobody get, get your feathers ruffled or anything like that or your wool out of shape. But people are hungry. They just, they just don't want a crowd. People are thirsty. People are looking for the evidence of God's goodness. They're looking for genuine, real power of the Holy Spirit of God. Do you know what draws people? His Spirit. Do you know what satisfies people? His Spirit. Do you know what quenches the fire, praise God, in people's hearts and lives for other things, and it satisfies their thirst? His Spirit. 
I know Pentecost is coming. <laughs> we aren't celebrating Pentecost today. We're celebrating the triumphal entry. But some folks, listen, we don't, as a, a body of Christ, I'm not saying you have to be loud like me. We're all different, thank God, because if we were all loud like me, I would, woo, what kind of church service would we have? Lord Jesus, somebody sit down, you know what I'm saying? But we're different. We have different personalities. We act different. And I'm not talking about emotionalism, that you have to prove you're spirit-filled because you shout. Dean Till is one of the quietest guys I know, but he is full of the power of the Holy Spirit. He, he's not a big mouth guy like me. He doesn't shout a lot. But boy, when you pray with him, when he prays for you, that's what I want to see turn loose in our lives. That's evidence of his triumphal entry. That's evidence that he has set us free. I'm telling you, you claim to be saved. If you don't talk any different than your neighbor, if you don't walk any different than your neighbor, and your neighbor doesn't claim to be saved, you better go check it again. You better come back to the altar and say, now, wait a minute, Lord. My life's no different than this person, and they don't even know you, but I do just what they do. I act just like they act. I talk just like they talk. I live just like they live, and I say I'm saved. What's the difference? I'm, can, I, can I preach to you for a few moments? Once like a bird in prison I dwelt. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and listened to me. And glory to God, <laughs> he set me free. Young lady, people that have been bound by things, when they're set free, they act a little different. People who are depressed, and the depression grips their life, and they have a dark cloud over their lives, when he comes and he rolls that cloud away, and he changes their mourning and sets them to dancing, he gives them beauty for ashes and strength for fear. Praise God. The joy of the Lord all of a sudden begins to work in their lives. They don't come in with a dark cloud. Oh, bother. Oh, dear. Life's too hard. No, they came in. They come in like Tigger. Woo! Right, right. I've been set free. Hallelujah. So I, I, I'm not judging anybody. I'm just telling you, you might be in the crowd and not even know why you're there. You might be in the crowd and miss him. You might be in the crowd. What was it? The woman with the issue? A blood reached out, and what did she do? Touched, touched the hem of his garment. And you know what he said? Who touched me? And his disciples said, I know they didn't say it like this, Lord, you done lost your mind. <laughs> they wouldn't have that disrespect. You done lost your mind. Everybody's touching you. What are you talking about? Who touched you? Now, what they said was, you have the audacity. Who touched you? There, there's a throng of people here, people all over the place bumping you. I mean, who, no, no, you don't understand. Some, somebody touched me. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you know what I'm talking about over here. You've been touched by the Lord, and then you have touched the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor, where are you going with this? I'm telling you, I don't want you to be just among the crowd and miss him. I don't want you to be among the crowd and not know who he really is. Although they cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Save now, O Lord. Grant us prosperity. Restore our kingdom to us, O son of David. Even though they recognized him as the king, the son, and the lineage of David, they didn't have a clue, some of them, who he was. Those who walk with him, they still didn't have the clearest understanding, but they had a better understanding. Those that saw him, at Lazarus' tomb, John tells us in chapter 12 of John, this is one of the reasons the crowds were there. Two reasons I know of right offhand. The festival was going on. The feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread. Okay? So the crowds were gathered. But the Bible tells us in John 12 that when they had heard Lazarus was there, whom Jesus had raised from the dead, many came to see Lazarus. I just want to see a dead man walking. 
Amen. Now, I, I don't know, but you could, this, I hope this doesn't offend anybody. There's a song out there about dead men walking. I'm not a dead man walking. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I'm a live man walking. My life has been changed. Praise God. I'm not the same person I was. Doug, man, when he comes in and makes that triumphal entry, victory takes place in your life. You're now no longer defeated. You are an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. You don't live it with a defeated mentality. You don't live, I'll never be able to do it. I just can't get over this. No, no, you'll go against the adversary and say, wait a minute, through Christ, I know I can do all things in him. Mindset. What are you saying? Triumphal entry. So when we look at the crowd, we know the crowd was gathered there. And when, again, when you raise somebody from the dead, something happens. Crowds show up. And that's why a lot of them were there to see Lazarus. Some were there to see Jesus who raised Lazarus from the dead. Others were there to celebrate. In my studies, I realized, and over the years I found out, that we have a solar calendar is what we go by, Gregorian calendar. But with the Jewish calendar, it is lunar. It is by the moon. When the first phase of the moon shows for the new moon in the year, that's when their year begins. Now, Rosh Hashanah celebrates what we consider the new year in September, October. But this um, Rosh Hashanah, it talks about how that it is the, the, uh, um, the new phase of the new moon. And it, on the 10th of April, in this particular thing, the 10th of April is when they were to perform the Passover feast and when they left Egypt. Started on the 10th of April, 14th, they went into the uh, 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 Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. As they were traveling, they would eat the unleavened bread. But on that 10th is when they were set. Today's the 10th of April. Last, no, no, the, the first, April Fool's Day, the first, April the first, was the phase of the first new moon, which ushered in. This is why it's important to us to understand their calendar. It ushered in a time they were celebrating Resurrection, But it wasn't resurrection of Christ that we do today. It was, I've been raised from the dead. I was a prisoner. Now I've been set free. There's a redemptive plan that God, it starts their new year. How would you like to start your new year off without a resolution, but with a redemption plan? Their redemption plan was set in place in April for them. They were set free. They were led out of Egyptian bondage, and they went to be with the Lord and walking with him. New things were taking place. God was ministering in a great way. And so we see it was the Genesis week of their life. It was the time, the first of the month. It was the time when they would bring in the fruit, and they would celebrate and give thanksgiving for the food that God had provided for them. It's nothing new, folks, for people to be called together. As far back as Samuel, Samuel called the people together to anoint Saul to be king. As far back as Moses, God said, call all the people together and you instruct them and tell them this is what I want them to do. The Paschal lamb will be slain. Passover meal will be served and you'll be, it'll be served with you ready to go. Shoes, on, sandals on your feet, clothes in your hand because when I say go, go. Are you living ready to go? I'm packed up, prayed up, and I'm ready to go. And someone asked me one time, how can you be so confident if you die that you're going to go to heaven? I said, well, my confidence is not in me. It's in Jesus Christ. I lay my head on the pillow at night. Well, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. If it's my time to go, it's my time to go, but I just want to make sure by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I've heard people say, pray for me because I want to make sure I'm ready. You know, I, I do, folks, doing's not what's going to get us there. Being. Man, I, I wish I'd originated this thought. I preach it like this, but I don't know that I've ever said it quite like this. And I heard someone the other day, and I thought, I like that. Our, our doing comes from being. All the works we do... In this casting out devils, raising the dead, healing the sick, and, and, and sharing the good news of the gospel, and letting people know, that's not why I rejoice. I don't rejoice because somebody got demon, demonically delivered. I rejoice because their name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's why I rejoice. Amen. I don't rejoice because he's given us power. I rejoice because he's given us power over death, hell, and the grave, power over sin. Some of y'all get that. Hallelujah. 
but my works that I do, it comes from being, being with the Savior, being in his presence, being, hallelujah, alone with God in a prayer closet. So when we step out, these works, we don't follow works. People jump from church to church following works, trying to find, no, <laughs> works should follow them that believe. Stop looking for the power of God and start letting the power of God work in you. Stop looking for a church that's going to wake you up and make you feel good. No, you should come in, honey, pumped, primed, and ready to go because Jesus is alive in you. Now, if you're visiting us today, I'm not knocking you for visiting. Thank you for being here. Praise God. Happy Palm Sunday. But the answer you're looking for is in Jesus, not in Jr. It's in Jesus, not in art. It's in Jesus, not in the praise team. It's in, see, some people, I just love to hear them sing. No, it's in Jesus. Yeah. It's not in Somerville Family Worship Center. It's in Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So don't follow the crowds. Don't just go along and see what's going on and hear what he's, no, I hear God's moving over here. I hear God's moving over there. Listen to me, folks. I want God to move right here. And when God starts moving right here, it don't listen to me. I've walked into some of the deadest, driest churches that there's ever been. It wasn't the same when I left there. I walked into a church one time, and a guy said, you sure? He said, yes, sir. They didn't, the church, it's the organization itself did not believe in speaking in tongues, not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I said, you sure you want me to preach in your church? Oh, yes, sir. I said, Okay. I got to preach and the Holy Ghost got to talking. <laughs> Came up for prayer, laid hands on a pastor, and he got slain in the spirit, got drunk in the spirit. He couldn't even set up hardly. He just, and his deacon said, go call 911. <laughs> Something's happened to the pastor. <laughs> oh, Shirley, you're my witness. Sir. I'll tell you the truth. Monroe, Virginia, you need to know it's the truth. <laughs> So he's down here like this, and I get down beside him, and I say, Pastor, listen to me. He's just, <laughs> he act like Ray Cox. <laughs> and, I said, and I said, Pastor, stop. I mean, stop. I said, stop. You've got to tell your church that you're okay. They're going to call 911. He gets his strength up. He, sits, he gets up on the altar, and he says, I'm okay, church. What this man's preaching to us, this is what was prophesied. What happened? Boom, and he goes out. <laughs> there was an elderly lady in the back who was very critical. I mean, she was criticizing for the whole service and didn't like what was going on. Oh, well, we don't act like that here. And so she told some of her friends, I'm going to prove to you there's nothing to this. She'd had surgery, messed her back up. She, she walked like this. She couldn't straighten up. And she was in pain, constantly moving and shifting. She walks up, and when she gets there, I'm standing here, and there's, I mean, listen to me. I've only been in a few services in my 50 years of ministry where I'd say, well, it's about time for me to wrap up. No, don't stop, pastor. Don't stop, preacher. You have the only bread in the house, and I'm hungry. I preached one time in the Philippines till just about midnight, from 10 o'clock till midnight. And afterwards, they had dinner, and we had a celebration that went probably to 1 or 1.30. They were in no hurry. Souls being saved, people being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. This woman walked up, and when she did, she stepped about right here, and I was praying for people. And she started to step up and all I did was say, in the name of Jesus, you be set free from this infirmity. And the power of God shot through me like lightning, hit that woman between the eyes, and she went like this. <laughs> eyes as big as saucers. And she said, oh, this is real. There's something to this. This is real. And her friends that were being critical with him, guess what? When they were being critical, they came up too and got them some. I don't want to be a part of dead things. Dead things don't move. Dead things rot. Some people have a rotten spirit. 
Dead things stink. Some people have a stinky attitude. Stinking thinking. Critical. Living things breathe and move are vibrant. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jerry. Man, I feel him in a rich way today. I'm just not in the crowd. I'm just not a part of the crowd. I know why the crowd's gathered. Hallelujah. I know who he is. Amen. Amen. Well, let me hurry. The palms. Palms represent joy. Palms were used, when I mentioned a moment ago, about them, them anointing a king. Palms were used in a celebration. Palms are used as victory. They're used for a symbol of peace. They're used for a symbol of triumph. The word itself, palm, means to lift up. You, you, you builders out there will enjoy this. To build something. To raise something up. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. What are you saying? Palm Sunday's here. I raise a hallelujah. Woo! Louder than my unbelief. Somebody back here needs to get this. I raise a hallelujah. Woo! Come on, somebody. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Why? Because he has made that triumphal entry. I'm raising a hallelujah. My soul rejoices. Praise God. Man, we were in a church, and this wasn't a dead church by no means. This was a very lively church, a good church, and we were serving there as an evangelist on staff for five years. Love and respect the people there, and the pastor, man, Gary Atkins, Bishop Atkins, and the church at Rock Hill Harvest Ministry. I love those people dearly. Man, we've known them since 1978, a lot of them. But they knew, and he would tell me, and I'd come in, what you doing here? You've been in 29 nights revival this month. You get in on Tuesday, and you're here on Wednesday. What you doing here? I'd come in from preaching. I couldn't hardly stand up. I'd be, listen, folks, I'm not saying it's the boast. I'll tell you what God could do, how hungry your pastor is for the Lord. I'd wring the water out of my socks every night. I was soaking wet, and I was weak. And I'd set up till 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning with Shirley working as she was doing transcription work to, to, to help with our insurance as we traveled full time. And I'd stay up with her and then I'd sleep for a few hours and get up and go visiting with the pastor. But I was hungry. We'd come in from revival. I'd show up on Sunday morning. He'd say, Richard, what are you doing here? Son, you've been going. Nobody's going to think anything. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here because I'm worried about what people are going to think. I'm here because I need you to preach to me. I'm here because I need to be refilled. I've given and given and given. I'm here because I just want to come and praise the Lord. So the praise team would start singing. They'd sing this song. And when they got to singing this song, oh, they, they, know, they know Richard Martin's in the house. I'm not going to apologize for that, folks. I'm loud. I live life loud. That's who I am. And I'm not I'm ashamed of God at all. Whew, standing on a a deck of a, a ship on a cruise ship. <laughs> People I even know, don't even know them. And this guy's giving us the run through of the life jackets. You know, the, here's the exercise, emergency exercise. If this ship should start sinking, and he's giving all these things up there, and I'm standing there, my pastor's here, other people, nobody's saying nothing. I'm like, good night. This is the best opportunity in the world. I step up and say, folks, let me have your attention, please. This life jacket may or may not save your life. You may drown if this ship goes down. If you do drown, where will you spend eternity? I'm going to tell you Jesus is the greatest lifeguard, the life preserver, and you need him as your savior. <laughs> Those real shy Christians are like, oh, Lord, what are you doing? we don't know this guy. 
But those Moses that knew, they said, man, you ain't got no sense. Praise God for you, Brother Martin. You just, you are a shame. Folks, I'm telling you, my wife and I ministered to someone over this, our anniversary at a restaurant, gave a young girl a book and poured into this young girl, and she's just, man, amazed at what God is doing, raising a hallelujah, raising a hallelujah. So they'd sing this song, words of worship. Rise like a river within me. My thoughts to express are so many. I want to bless you, God. I can't keep silent when I think of the mercy you show me. My lips begin overflowing. Great is your love. Such gratitude with all that I am. Jesus to you. At the top of my lungs, I will sing hallelujah. You're the one who saved me, the one who gave me this life I live forevermore, forevermore. And then look at it, come Richard Martin up the aisle. At the top of my lungs, I will sing <laughs> I just don't understand why people are sitting still. I just don't understand why they're not moving. It just blows my mind. You know, one of the hardest things for me as a pastor and a minister for 50 years, the altar call. I, I never, ever quite got the niche of that or the hang of that. Lord Jesus, if somebody told me how to escape the fire, if somebody told me how to be set free, if somebody has just taken 30, 40 minutes and they laid it out there, this wonderful meal that he loves me, you couldn't keep me from coming. You couldn't tie me down. So I never quite got the hang of the altar call where you, as a pastor, you got to get up and kind of beg people to come. Now, everybody needs to come and talk to the Lord now. I know somebody in here needs to pray. You ever been in those services? We're not quitting yet. I know somebody needs the Lord. Oh, Jesus, if they hadn't got it by now, I feel like telling like the rich man and Lazarus, Abraham telling him, listen, well, hey, hold up, listen. If they, they got Moses and the law and the prophets. If they don't believe him, they're going to believe somebody raised from the dead. Some of you folks hanging out with people they just don't believe, they're not going to believe what you tell them. They are going to believe what you show them. Man, when they look at your life and they see you are different, when you say, I don't do that, no, I don't go there, I won't do this, no. I say, why? You're different. Yes, I am. Why? Jesus. Oh, I know they'll judge you. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Listen to me. Palms. i got to hurry. Palms. Wow, wow, wow. Palms being lifted up in the presence for a new king. It tells us that Solomon, listen to me now, in 1 Kings chapter 6, tells us that Solomon had carvings in the temple, he carved cherubim or angels. He carved, carved out palm trees and open flowers, uh, almond buds and open flowers. Uh, and it talks about how with, with and without the temple. And it says he overlaid them with gold. Everything about the temple points to Jesus. Everything about the tabernacle, this will be okay. If it doesn't bother you, it's not going to bother me. I, I got like this so I can quickly get the baptism, okay? Okay, thank you. So everything about that points to Jesus. Everything about this Palm Sunday celebration points to Jesus. He is the one who brings us victory. He is the one who has given us triumph. We triumph in him. He is our peace who has broken down every wall. The, the, the palm itself represents eternal, evergreen, eternal. Listen to me, eternal. Jesus gives us eternal life. And now... Since we've talked about that, let's go to the beast of burden. Untie them and bring them to me. Jesus sent them, and I love what one passage says, in a, in a place you'll find them tied at the place where two ways meet. That is powerful, where two ways meet. Did you know you are sitting right now today where two ways meet? You can leave here tied or untied. You can stay bound and a slave and a servant, or you can leave here redeemed, set free, and willing to serve. Your choice. So in looking at this, this is just your pastor's thinking, okay? Everybody say, get, say, get, ready. get ready. I imagine when they untied the, the, 
the donkey and untie the colt, the foal. Uh, again, the triumphal entry is in fulfillment of Zechariah 9, where Zechariah is telling them, listen, your king is coming. He's going to be riding on a donkey and the colt or the foal. What was he saying there in that foal? It's never been ridden before. Inexperienced burden bearer. Never had anybody on his back. But this day, Jesus was going to be riding on the foal. Brought the mama along, the foal would follow the mama. Jesus riding on the unridden animal. Everybody catch that? Naturally, when you get on an unridden animal, uh, uh, it, the spirit has not been broken yet. If, I don't know if you've ever been bucked off a horse. I have. Not a fun trip. It's not flying through the air that bothers me. It's the ground catching me that hurts. Amen. Get on, got on a Tennessee walker one time, like 15 to 17 hands high. It's a big old thing. I had to climb up, get up on that thing, boy. As soon as he got out the gate, took off. Whew, there I went. You know what I did? I got right back up. Got back on him until I could ride him. Oh, my Lord. What are you saying? That is us before we are redeemed. So if you're still stubborn, if you're still rebellious, if you still got to have it your way, <laughs> woo, then you need a triumphal entry. Untie them. That's almost like he said, loose him, let him go. Lazarus. Anybody heard that? So here, here we go. Get ready because I love this. This is my definition of how that donkey responded. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. Oh, I know who he is, do you? Children's Church, I know, I wish they were in here right now because they would love this because this, I can see that donkey saying, oh, he wants me. And he said, if they ask what, who wants to say, the Lord has need of him. Well, the Lord wants me, I, the creator. Yes. I know who he is to you. Yes. He spoke everything into existence. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He is the word. <laughs> I know who he is. He's been made flesh and he's dwelling among us. Oh, he's asking for me. Yes. Yes. I love this. Right. Why in the world would a king ride a donkey right. instead of a war horse? Yes. Because he wasn't coming for war this trip. Right. He wasn't coming to be anointed as the king this trip. He came to be the sacrifice. He came to be the savior. He came, hallelujah, to be our burden bearer. He wasn't announcing, and then many times they wanted to make him king and set him up as king. Or, and you know what? It was selfish reasons, Kenny. It, it, even when he's getting ready to go die, when he's going to die, so what, tell us when your kingdom's coming. Right. When, when are we going to come back into our kingdom? When are we going to get what is coming to us? They thought with a human eye and flesh, Roman tyranny's going to be gone, Israel's going to be reinstated, the nation, everything's going to be great. That's not what he came for. He came for a new Jerusalem. Amen. He came for a new plan of a church to bring Jew and Gentile together. Yeah. Wow, wow. So if, if you've ever seen this, anybody knows what this is? You ever seen it? Mm. On the back of a donkey. I remember, I remember in high school we played donkey basketball. That's the most fun I've ever had. Lord, and the train. These guys have them trained. They'll blow that whistle a certain way. They'll sit right down on the court with you. You can't get them. And you've got to be on the back of the donkey to make a basket. And we'd be competing with each other. We, I laugh so hard. Of course, you know, I'm going to have fun, even if it's, if it's with a water hose and sprinkling somebody. I don't mind, you know. I, I'm gonna, my kids, that's why they love me so much. You walk by and you see something over there. That's just a water hose. No, I see fun. Get out the way. Lord, my girls will be in the house sometimes, and I'm over there washing dishes, and they get close enough, and I grab that sprayer. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's on them, boy. They grab a cup of water. Now, I have to mop up later, but we have a ball. <laughs> that's, that's who I am, this cross. But I remember seeing this on a donkey's back. There's a legend about this. There's all kinds of stories about this. But I want to tell you what it brought to my mind when I saw this. Moses, I saw the colt with a cross as he carries the Savior to yeah. his. I thought, how befitting. And I would never call him, I would never call our Savior the beast by any means. But the beast of burden was carrying the burden bearer yes. that day. So when you're fretting as a mother, when you don't know what to do, and you're holding 
that sweet little daughter of yours. And it's, I don't know what I'm going to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Hallelujah. Trust the burden bearer. God, I'm overwhelmed today. We, my wife and I were talking to someone the other day with several children. They're just overwhelmed. Life is just, what do you do? Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. He is the burden bearer. He loves you. And he wants to carry our burden. Did he not himself say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will ignore you? No, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let's do this together. Yeah. You'll find my yoke is not like the yoke you're under. Right. The yoke you're under chafes you. It brings blisters. It irritates you. It aggravates you. It hurts you. But my yoke is lined with love and mercy and grace. Right. Woo! Hallelujah. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart, and ye shall find rest to your souls. My, 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 my. I got to hurry. Listen, the burden bearer. Isaiah 53 lets us know that we did esteem him smitten and stricken of God. It says, but he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Oh, my goodness. 1 Peter 5 and 7 tells us, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He cares for us, folks. All your worries and trouble. When it says be anxious for nothing, anxiety, folks, we are living in a time. And I'm going to get a little bold right now. We're living in a time where they want to call everything a disease so they can treat it with medicine. Some things are not a disease. Some things are a spirit. And it needs to be addressed in the spiritual realm. Well, I, I, I won't say what I'm thinking. Lord Jesus, give me wisdom. Man, man, man. Don't you encourage, don't you? It's like sick of the dog. Like, skip, skip. Don't, don't do that. You, can, you go cause, I can go out on the limb. I'm not worried. I know the tree, but I just don't want, I want to go there right now. Oh, Lord. I'll just say it this way. Some people are being treated for things and they're being medicated for things that if they could just be anxious for nothing, but in everything, if they could make it known to the Lord, in everything, if they would surrender it to God, they wouldn't have to have the medicine or, or other things to calm them. If you run to other things to bring you rest, peace, and joy, you need a triumphal entry. You're judging me. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you I know. You're looking at a candidate for all type of medications they want to give me. Yeah. But you know what I tell them? Uh, God made me like I am right now. I'm good. Everything's cool. Um, I don't want, a, I don't want a, a, a pill that's going to bring me up, bring me down, bring me up, bring me down, bring me up, bring me down. I, I'm not saying we don't have chemical things, hormonal things that need to be addressed and fixed. I'm not, I'm not against that, okay? So don't you leave me thinking, man. Guy's a heretic. He's crazy, man. He believes in healing and forget it. No, no. Yeah. But what I am telling you is there are some things that they have labeled diseases that are not diseases. And we need to wise up and realize. It's, it's like I was sharing a few weeks. It might have been last week when I was sharing this about the, the root of the, the covetousness and pride, the first sin. We, was Wednesday night, Thursday night we were sharing this. Yeah, Thursday night we were sharing this. The third, the third sin recorded in the Bible, disobedience, rooted in covetousness. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Praise team, get ready, please. Rooted in that. The first sin, the first sin, Lucifer lifted himself up in pride. Why? Because of covetousness. I'm going to set my throne above God's throne, he says. I'm the one who deserves to be worshipped. He was coveting, okay? Which led to the second sin that we find recorded. And that second sin was lies and deceit. 
Oh, you won't die if you eat this. You're going to be okay. And when she saw it was good for lust of the eyes, it was good for food and able to make one wise. Pride. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Then she reached out and she took it and she ate it. And her eyes were open. What are you saying? There are roots to problems, generational roots to problems in some people's lives, emotional, spiritual roots that need to be addressed. Not just medicated, they need to be addressed. I, I know this is not popular. Right. Tina, we live in a, a medicated world, but I'm telling you, I believe he is our healer. I believe he can heal me emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. I believe he can set me free. Well, I act the way I act because my mama. Doesn't mean she was right either. Now, I'm not going there with your mama. I've got a mama. I love you, mom. <laughs> but it doesn't mean they're right. You can't excuse it. Can't excuse it. So what am I saying? I'm saying... He is a burden bearer. Give them all, give them all to Jesus. Shattered dreams, wounded hearts, broken toys. Give it all to Jesus today. Triumphal entry. Wow. The crowd. Now you know why the crowd was there. The palms. You know what? The significance of the palms. And now you know about the beast of burden. His role he played. Man. The legend says he went on to say, well, I carried Mary when she gave birth to the Creator. The donkeys in its lineage of all this bragging and boasting, you know. I've carried kings, I've carried prophets, I've carried judges, you know, and on and on and on. He's coming back. He's coming back riding on that war horse. He's coming back to conquer as king. What about in our hearts and lives today? Heavenly Father, I hope I haven't muddied up the waters too bad, God, to where I, people can't see what, I'm, what you're wanting them to see today. I hope I've said something, Lord, to stir hearts and lives, to, to say, I need a triumphal entry. I've let things bind me too long. I need to be untied. I need to be loosened from where I am. I need to be set free. I want a triumphal entry, God, in my marriage, in my home, in my mind, in my health, in my life. I, want, I need, not just one, I need a triumphal entry. Show yourself mighty on my behalf. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. When I close my eyes, I can see your glory. When I raise my hand, I can touch your face when I bow on my knees. I stand before you and Christ. He is for in me.
Shame 
beautiful service today. Um, the Lord surely is here, isn't he? May the Lord bless you this week, and may you have just a, um, a good communion with him every day. He wants to walk with you and talk with you every day. Um, just by uh, adding something to the announcement that I made earlier, please sign up for these two events that I've told you about um, next, the breakfast next Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, the Seder meal. You need to sign up for those, okay? Do that today. And um, also, in closing, let's remember the Fisher family. Um, uh, most of you know Fred Fisher and Betty Fisher. They were our general presbyters at one time, our state bishop at one time. But brother and sister Fisher lost their son, Fred Jr., last, uh, night before last. He had a, they, well, he passed away. And um, so let's remember the Fisher family, okay? And um, in this closing prayer, if you have a prayer request, would you just lift your hand up? Praise the Lord. Um, Mr. Shirley, can you yes. pastor say and remember Sister Helen? Also? Yes, let's remember uh, Sister Helen Scott. I know she would love a text from you or um, a call from you just to let her know how much you love her and you, and you miss her here today. So let's remember Sister Helen. <clears throat> Any other request? Thank you for joining us today. Kaylee's family is here today. It is so nice to have them today. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Glenn and Tony are here all the way from Tennessee. They're moving, but just not close enough. Um, but um, it's so good to have them visiting with us today. Um, and little Miss Raiden over here in the pink today. Oh, no, today's not her first service. Today's her second service, right? And um, so um, I just love it when I hear these little girls uh, her and Harper praising the Lord, don't you? They, they do that during the service. I just love it. They'll say, praise the Lord in their language, in their language. I just love it. But God bless you all. Um, hope to see you soon. Um, everyone that's here today, thank you. Thank you for being here today. God bless you. And I tell you, um, these kids being baptized brought tears to my eyes because I know the enemy is after our children. Because if they get our children, they, they got the generation. So um, I just, these boys, I tell you, Luke and Nate, they just touched my heart today. Thank God for the children. I wouldn't be here today probably if I hadn't accepted the Lord as a young girl, eight years old. Who knows where I'd be today? But God bless you, and um, he's a good Lord, isn't he? Yes. Praise the Lord. Would you bow your head, and let's pray today. Father, you have, you have blessed us today. Would you go with my brothers and sisters and everyone under the sound of my voice today? Would you go with them and protect them, keep them from all harm and danger? Lord, help them to bask in your word that has been preached today. Lord, and bask in your presence that we have all felt today. We praise you, Lord. Lord, you have heard these requests, and you've seen every hand that has gone up, Lord. Oh, Father, we bring them to you today, Father. Lord, would you heal and set free and deliver and redeem today, Lord Jesus. The, the healing that's needed may be physical. It may be in other ways. Lord, would you move on their behalf, Father. Lord, for Sister Helen, would you strengthen her body, Father. Oh, precious Jesus. Lord, and would you comfort the Fisher family. Lord, we ask it in your name, Jesus, and no other name is salvation. And no other name is healing and, and deliverance, Lord, but in your name. We thank you, Lord. Amen.
God bless you.
Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God. 